let us look at differentiation of a complex function. So, uh, the concept of uh, of the derivative of a complex function okay, is uh, motivated by uh, well uh, the concept of uh, derivative uh, of a uh, real valued function of a real variable okay, and is defined uh, very similarly. Okay. So, here is the definition uh, let d be contained in c okay, and let uh, a be a point in the set D. Okay. Also, let uh, the ball, the open ball of radius R be contained in uh, the set D around A, open ball of radius R around A be contained in D for some number R, uh, real number R greater than 0. Okay, strictly greater than 0. Now, uh, let f from d to c be a function ok. Now, we will define the derivative of f at the point a. Under these uh, assumptions, the derivative of uh, f at the point A is uh, defined to be, or uh, defined uh, to be, the limit as h approaches zero of f of A plus h minus f of A divided by the complex number h, which is approaching zero if this limit exists okay, this limit exists okay. so uh, this is the difference quotient which is familiar to the uh, viewer uh, from uh, functions of one uh, real variable okay so uh, the definition uh, must be familiar to the viewer as well okay but here the context is that uh, we have a complex function and the difference quotient is a complex quotient. Okay. So, uh, f of a plus h is a complex number, f of a is a complex number, the difference is a complex number and we divide by uh, the other complex number h which is approaching 0. Okay. And uh, quickly let me say that if this uh, limit exists, okay, we say that f is differentiable at uh, a okay. and if uh, this limit does not exist okay, then uh, we likewise say that uh, f is not differentiability okay. and uh, we use the following notation for derivative inspired by function of one real variable. Okay. The value of uh, this limit okay, in the definition Okay, uh, when it exists, okay, is written as f prime of a uh, or as d f by d z at z equals a. Okay, we will more often use the notation f prime of a rather than d f by d z at z equals a. Okay. Uh, so, let us see uh, an example of, uh, of a function uh, which is uh, differentiable. Okay. So, let uh, d equals 
c minus uh, the complex number i. Okay. So, it is all of the complex plane except the point i okay, and let uh, f from d to c be defined by uh, okay, be given by f of z is equal to 3 z by z minus i. Okay. So, it is a rational function okay. and um, <coughs> then okay, f is differentiable at every point z naught uh, in d. Okay. So, uh, let us see why. Okay. So, let us see why f is differentiable at every point z naught in d. Okay. So, let z naught belong to d like it is given okay. and let us uh, compute the limit of uh, the difference quotient f of z naught plus h minus f of z naught by uh, h. Okay. So, this is uh, equal to uh, from the definition of the function, this is this is equal to limit as h goes to 0 3 times z naught plus h divided by z naught plus h minus i okay. and that is your f of z naught plus h minus 3 times z naught by z naught minus i okay. that is your f of z naught divided by uh, h. Okay. So, uh, this in turn is the limit as h goes to 0 uh, 1 by h times let us uh, clear the fraction and uh, in the numerator and we get 3 times z naught plus h times z naught minus i minus 3 z naught times z naught plus h minus i. Uh, divided by uh, z naught plus h minus i times z naught minus i. So, this gives me uh, the limit as h goes to 0. Let us now multiply everything out in the numerator. So, that uh, I get 3 z naught square okay, plus uh, 3 h z naught minus 3 i z naught minus 3 h i okay. uh, and then the second uh, term here is minus 3 z naught squared upon expansion minus 3 z naught h uh, plus 3 i z naught divided by uh, z naught plus h minus i times z naught minus i. So, this is the limit as h goes to 0, uh, then we have uh, 1 by h times. So, let us observe cancellations. So, 3 z naught squared cancels with uh, 3 z naught squared. So, just a minute, uh, let us pick a uh, color. Okay. So, 3 z naught squared cancels with 3 z naught squared okay. and then 3 h z naught cancels with a 3 z naught h minus 3 z naught h okay. and likewise 3 i uh, z naught cancels with 3 i z naught okay. and finally, we are left with uh, minus 3 h i. Okay. So, uh, okay. minus 3 h i uh, divided by z naught plus h minus i times z naught minus i. Okay. So, since h approaches 0 and h does not equal 0, we can cancel the h uh, in the numerator and the denominator okay. and then this is limit as h goes to 0 of minus 3 i divided by z naught plus h minus i times z naught minus i. Okay. So, now we can let the limit as h goes to 0 uh, come into the picture okay. and uh, notice that uh, this is a rational function of uh, h 
in some sense okay uh, where z naught is uh, z naught and i uh, and other things 3 etc are constants so uh, the value of this rational function as h goes to 0 is obtained by substitution h equals 0 okay like i commented earlier uh, so, then this is minus 3 i by z naught plus now h can be assumed to be 0. So, this is z naught minus i times z naught minus i. So, you get minus 3 i by z naught minus i square. Okay. And since, so, so this limit exists, okay. not only does this limit exist, we have found out uh, what f prime of z naught is. So, f prime of z naught uh, is minus 3 i by z naught minus i square. Okay. And since z naught is arbitrary point in the domain, okay, f is uh, differentiable at every point in its domain. And um, so, when a function is differentiable uh, at every point in its domain, we simply say that f is differentiable. Okay. So, like for continuity, where we say that uh, f is continuous simply when it is uh, when it is uh, co continuous at every point in its domain. Okay. So, remark 1, okay. uh, if f is differentiable. at every point in its domain, then we say that f is differentiable. Okay, f is differentiable without any reference to the point where it is differentiable. Okay. And um, so, the second remark is uh, polynomial functions and uh, rational functions are differentiable okay so uh, so the phenomenon uh, exhibited by the f in our example uh, is actually uh, characteristic of any rational function and uh, and any rational function is differentiable at every point in its domain okay and likewise polynomials it's easy to show uh, are differentiable let us look at uh, yet another example uh, here is an example of a function which is peculiarly differentiable only at a single point okay so uh, show that the function defined from complex numbers to complex numbers okay, defined by f of z equals z times real part of z. Okay. So, it is the product of the complex number z with the real part of z okay, is differentiable. Show that this is differentiable only at 0 only at the origin of 0. Okay. So, let, uh, let us show this. Okay. So, let z belong to c okay. and let us examine the difference quotient f of z plus h minus f of z divided by h. Okay. And this is by the definition of the function z plus h times the real part of uh, z plus h minus uh, z times the real part of z divided by h. Okay. So, when uh, well further this is actually equal to z times uh, the real part of z, because the real part of z plus h is the real part of z plus the real part of h. Okay. So, this is z times the real part of z, z plus 
z times real part of h plus h times the real part of z plus h times the real part of h minus z times the real part of z okay, divided by h. Okay. So, we thus get z times the real part of uh, rather h okay, after cancellation uh, here and here okay, uh, divided by h okay, plus the rest of the terms uh, have um, an h in them. So, we can cancel with the denominator as long as h is not 0. Okay. Well, in the first place we cannot divide by h if h is 0. Okay. So, this is plus real part of z plus real part. So, real part of h. Okay. So, now uh, the limit let us now look at what happens when we try to take the limit as h goes to 0 of f of z plus h minus f of z by h. This is the limit as um, h goes to 0 uh, of z real part of h by uh, h okay, plus well the real part of uh, z plus real part of h will be uh, simply the real part of z as uh, as when h approaches 0 the real part of h approaches uh, well uh, 0. Okay. So, we just have real part of z. Okay. Now, but if, if z is not equal to 0 okay, then uh, the limit as h goes to 0 z times real part of h by h this limit does not exist. Why? That is because um, if h tends to 0 uh, through purely imaginary numbers. Okay. So, through numbers which are uh, which have the real part as 0 okay, uh, then then the real part of h is 0. Okay. So, the limit is uh, well okay. so then um, that happens. Okay. So, real part of uh, h by h is 0 uh, for h uh, for h approaching 0 through such numbers. Whereas, Okay. Whereas, if h tends to 0 okay, uh, through purely real numbers, okay, through uh, real numbers, which means the imaginary part of such numbers is, uh, is uh, 0, okay, uh, then the real part of h is h itself. So, that uh, real part of h by h which appears here in the limiting process okay, uh, is actually equal to 1 okay, and uh, there is. Okay, so, then there are two ways of approaching 0 which produce uh, different z real part of h by h. Okay. So, one produces z times 0 constantly and the other produces z times 1 constantly okay, z times 1. So, so this limit does not exist. So, limit h goes to 0 uh, z times real part of h by h does not exist. Okay. But on the other hand we are lucky if z is equal to 0. If z is equal to 0 we do not have to worry about how h approaches 0 already the, the uh, quotient z times real part of h by h is equal to 0. So, this limit exists. Okay. So, let us let us go back to uh, allow me to go back a little bit. 
okay, and look at the difference quotient here you see that the limit as h goes to 0 of this difference quotient okay, boils down to this limit we have been examining okay, and plus real part of z. Okay. And we showed that this limit exists only when, uh, when z is equal to 0. Okay. So, when z is equal to 0, this function f of z is differentiable and when z is not equal to 0, this uh, said limit does not exist. And uh, so, the function is not differentiable. Okay. So, let me conclude that and so, uh, f of uh, okay, f of z is differentiable only at z equals 0. Okay. And uh, we know that f prime of 0 is uh, 0. So, uh, that is an example peculiar example we have to bear in mind okay, uh, where uh, the function is differentiable only at a single point. Okay. And here is uh, an exercise for the viewer okay, uh, show that f from c to c okay, defined by f of z equals the modulus of z square okay, is differentiable okay, only at the origin and nowhere else of course. Okay. If f is a uh, complex function firstly, okay, it can be uh, considered as uh, a function from uh, subset of r 2 to r 2 that we already saw. Okay. So, if f of x plus i y is v of x sorry u of x comma y plus i times v of x comma y, where u and v are the real and imaginary parts of f okay, uh, throughout its domain. Okay. So, f is from d contained in uh, c to c. Okay. So, uh, then um, okay, so u and v are the real and imaginary parts of f. Okay. Then f can be considered as a function, okay, f can be uh, considered as a function from a subset of R 2 uh, to R 2. Okay. So, by forgetting the complex structure what we can do is uh, we can say f of x comma y. So, this is really a different function, but let me uh, use the same notation f f of x y is equal to u of x comma y comma v comma x comma y okay, defines a function f from uh, d contained in r 2 now to r 2 this we have already seen. Okay. So, then one can ask that well we have uh, the cons the notion of differentiability for functions from R 2 to R 2 okay. and then now we have a, a, a new definition for complex differenti differentiability. Okay. So, then um, are the notions uh, same or uh, are the notions different and to what extent. Okay. So, I will remind the viewer that uh, if a function from R 2 to R 2 uh, if, if f is a function from r 2 to r 2, then the differentiability uh, of f is defined in terms of a matrix. Okay. So, uh, the differentiable uh, f is uh, the differentiation of f uh, near a point or at a point a b is a linear approximation of the function uh, uh, near that point. Okay. And so, uh, if you need a linear trans uh, linear approximation of a function from R 2 to R 2, you need to consider a linear transformation, which then becomes a matrix. Okay. Whereas, here we have uh, the differentiation of a complex function is a complex number. Okay. So, there is a, a difference uh, between these two notions, okay. but we will try to reconcile uh, the difference um, uh, okay, uh, in, a short, in the short while. Okay. So, uh, in this uh, in this version of f okay, d f I will remind uh, the viewer d f at a point a b is going to be uh, well a b is a point in um, the domain okay, and I am assuming that uh, f is differentiable at 
uh, a b. Okay. Then d f at a b is a linear approximation of f at the point a b okay. and it is dou u by dou x, dou u by dou y, dou v by dou x and dou v by dou y all these partial derivatives of u and v evaluated at the point a b. Okay. So, uh, the linear approximation of the function f or uh, the differentiation as we define it exists if and only if uh, the partial derivatives of uh, f um, okay, uh, all of them uh, uh, all these dou u by dou x, dou u by dou y, dou v by dou x and dou v by dou y uh, exist okay, uh, and are continuous at the point a b. Okay. And when they exist and are continuous, uh, we have um, d f is this. Okay. And if you take a point, um, well, a vector in R2 based at the point A B, then D F okay, uh, takes vectors in R2 okay, near okay, vectors in R2 to vectors in R2. Okay. So, R2 vectors, this is vectors near the point A B okay, or based at the point A B, based at the point A comma. Okay, that was the setting for function of two real variables okay, uh, and uh, whose uh, range is a subset of R2. Okay. And uh, we see we will first see that um, the partial derivatives dou u by dou x, dou u by dou y and dou v by dou x and dou v by dou y satisfy uh, certain uh, relations uh, amongst themselves. And uh, these uh, are called the Cauchy Riemann equations, which we are uh, now going to examine. Okay. So, uh, now assume that, so under, under this assumption, assume further that uh, f is differentiable. Okay, at a point okay uh, z equals x plus i y belongs to d okay then of course the limit okay f prime of z is the limit as h tends to 0 f of z plus h minus f of z by h so, like in the example we saw uh, preceding this discussion, um, h can approach 0 uh, through various ways okay, or at least uh, through two different ways. One is through purely uh, real numbers and one is through purely uh, imaginary numbers. Okay. So, uh, let us examine uh, what happens as a consequence. Okay. Uh, then, since h can approach uh, Okay, h can approach 0 okay, um, through real numbers okay, f prime of z okay, is equal to of course, now we are assuming that this limit exists. Okay. So, uh, the value of this limit is also equal to okay, uh, limit as h goes to 0 through real numbers. Here, I am writing h belongs to r what that means is h is a real number and h approaches 0 okay, of f of x plus i y allow me to write uh, z as x plus i y uh, by our assumption plus h here h has no um, imaginary part. So, it is simply h as a real number minus f of x plus i y uh, divided by h. Okay. So, when we see this, uh, when we write this in terms of u and v. Okay. So, this is equal to limit as h goes to 0, h belongs to r. So, now I will uh, simply consider uh, the limit as h goes to 0. Um, as a real limit okay, uh, of u of x plus h, because x plus h now is the real part of x plus i y plus h okay, comma uh, y plus i times v of x plus h comma y minus uh, u of x comma y 
plus i times v of x comma y divided by the number h. Okay. So, this is the limit as h goes to 0, h belongs to real numbers. Okay. So, after separation we get uh, u of um, let me write this u of x plus h comma y minus uh, u of x y divided by h. Okay. And um, so we are assuming that this limit exists. So, I will write plus i and separate the limiting process h goes to 0 h belongs to r okay, v of x plus h comma y minus v of x y divided by h. Okay. So, we readily recognize that um, h is through real numbers. Okay. So, we readily recognize that this these limits are nothing but the partial derivatives of uh, u and v with respect to x. So, there are various notations. So, let me use the dou u by dou x notation okay, of, uh, of the function uh, u at the point x comma y plus i times uh, dou u rather dou v by dou x at the point x comma y. Okay. So, uh, so, when h approaches 0 through purely real numbers, we see that f prime of z should really equal dou u by dou x okay, at the point x comma y plus i times dou v by dou x at the point x comma y. So, now uh, let us uh, suppose that h approaches um, okay, uh, 0 through purely uh, imaginary numbers. Okay. So, if h approaches 0 through purely imaginary uh, numbers, okay, uh, then write h as uh, i k. Okay. So, uh, where k is real now, where k belongs to r. Okay. So, there is no real part to h now, uh, uh, it is purely imaginary. So, we can write it as i k okay, and assume that k is a real number which approaches 0. Okay. So, <coughs> and and then f prime of z will now be limit as well it is by definition this is limit as h goes to 0 f of z plus h uh, minus f of z by uh, h. Okay. So, now it has to equal the limit as k goes to 0 k is a real number okay, of f of uh, z plus i k minus because h is i k by assumption f of z by uh, i k. Okay. So, uh, then when we uh, once again write this in terms of uh, u and v, uh, what we get is this is the limit as k approaches 0, k belongs to r okay. u of x comma y plus k minus u of x comma y uh, divided by i k okay, uh, minus <coughs> okay, uh, or rather plus limit plus i times the limit as k goes to 0, uh, k belongs to r okay, uh, <coughs> v of x comma y plus k minus v of x comma y divided by i k. Okay. So, uh, really uh, I, I will eliminate this i here in the denominator, because uh, when we jump to the context of functions of two variables, uh, the complex number appearance there is not desirable. Okay. So, let me write this as minus i times the limit as k goes to 0 k belongs to r, because 1 by i is minus i. 
ok u of x comma y plus k minus u of x y divided by k and uh, plus i cancels here in the second uh, term. So, we get limit as k goes to 0 through real numbers v of x comma y plus k minus v of x y by k, which we recognize as the partial derivatives of u and v uh, with respect to y. So, this is minus i times uh, dou u by dou y at the point x comma y plus uh, dou v by dou y at the point x comma y. Okay. So, in summary uh, f prime of z is minus i dou u by dou y at the point x comma y uh, plus dou v by dou y at the point x comma y. Okay. And from an earlier expression, uh, this is equal to uh, dou u by dou x at the point x comma y plus i times dou v by dou x at the point x comma y. Okay. Now, equating the real and imaginary parts uh, in this uh, in this equation, uh, what we get is the following. We get uh, dou u by dou x at the point x comma y is equal to dou v by dou y at the point x comma y okay. and um, dou v by dou x at the point x comma y is minus of dou u by dou y at the point x comma y. Okay. And these two uh, equations are called uh, the Cauchy Riemann equations. After the famous mathematicians uh, Cauchy and uh, Riemann. Okay. And, uh, so, when a function is differentiable at a point z equals x plus i y, the real and imaginary parts uh, satisfy uh, the Cauchy Riemann equations. Okay. So, let us see a quick example here. So, uh, let us look at this example, uh, let f of z equals z cube, okay, uh, which is a polynomial function. Okay. Then, uh, the limit as h goes to 0, okay, uh, well of course, uh, f of z plus h minus f of z by h, okay, one can calculate uh, this comes out to be 3 z square. Okay. And, um, when we try to write f as it is real and imaginary parts. Okay. Uh, what uh, we get is uh, x cube minus 3 x y square okay, plus i times uh, 3 x squared y minus y cube, okay, where uh, z is x plus i y. Okay. And so, here u of x comma y is equal to x cube minus 3 x y square and v of x comma y is equal to 3 x squared y minus y cube. Okay. And one can uh, check that dou u by dou x is 3 x squared minus 3 y squared okay. and uh, dou v rather yeah, dou v by dou x is 6 x y dou u by dou y is minus 6 x y and dou v by dou y is 3 x squared minus 3 y squared. Okay. So, f is a, a function which is differentiable at every point in its domain and as you can see uh, dou u by dou x is equal to dou v by dou y and dou u by dou y is minus of dou v by dou x. Okay. So, uh, f satisfy u and v satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations. Now, uh, I will make some uh, remarks about uh, differentiability. Uh, complex differentiability. Okay. So, early on we saw that uh, f can be considered as a function from a subset of R 2 to R 2. Okay. Uh, if f is a function from complex 
a subset of complex plane to complex plane okay and when f is differentiable at a point a plus i b it is also differentiable at a point a comma b okay and df uh, at the point a b has the form uh, do u by do x do u by do y and do v by do x do v by do y okay it is given by this matrix at the point a b Okay. Uh, now, since f is complex differentiable at a plus i b, okay, um, uh, the partial derivatives satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann conditions. Okay. So, this can be rewritten as uh, dou u by dou x, dou u by dou y and dou v by dou x is uh, minus dou u by dou y and uh, dou v by dou y is dou u by dou x okay, at the point a comma b. Okay. So, uh, okay. so it is it is differentiable. So, f is differentiable in this sense in the r 2 to r 2 sense okay. uh, and uh, there are further conditions further restrictions on the partial derivatives. Okay. So, at least it is differentiable uh, function from r 2 to r 2. So, what we can conclude is that um, since differentiability at a point implies continuity at that point for functions from uh, subsets of R 2 to R 2. Okay. And since the topology of uh, C is uh, the same as the topology of R 2 is the topology of R 2 is the same as the topology of R 2. Okay. What I mean by that is um, the epsilon balls in R 2 correspond to the epsilon balls in uh, C and open sets in R 2 correspond to open sets in C. Okay. Um, precisely they are equal, okay. uh, the topologies are equal. Uh, so, <coughs> and since continuity is just a topological property, okay. uh, so differentiability complex differentiability implies uh, differentiability okay, at a point I should say at a point like we saw above implies differentiability as a function from R 2 to R 2 at the point which implies the continuity of the function as a function from R 2 to R 2 at that point and this implies the continuity of the function as a function from R 2 to R 2 or uh, from a subset of C to C uh, once again at that point. Okay. So, differentiability complex differentiability implies complex continuity. Okay, so uh, so that is true even in even for complex functions. Okay, so that's a vague explanation of that point. Okay, and uh, the second um, note is as follows: We are going to see the geometric interpretation of the derivative. Okay, of the complex derivative. So, uh, you see that d f has this special form when f is complex differentiable okay, uh, and if we consider uh, f as a function from r 2 to r 2, it has this form dou u by dou x, dou u by dou y okay, and dou minus dou u by dou y and dou u by dou x at the point a b. Okay. So, the Jacobian of f at the point a b okay at the point a b 
is uh, the determinant of this matrix which is dou u by dou x squared plus dou v dou u by dou y squared at the point a b okay at the point a b okay and um, f prime like we saw above in the derivation of uh, cauchy riemann equations okay so f prime of z okay of a plus i b is going to be uh, dou u by dou x plus uh, i times dou v by dou x okay which is equal to dou u by dou x by the cauchy riemann equations this is minus i times dou u by dou y okay so uh, that minus does not matter what i want what i want to say is that the modulus of f prime of a plus i b is now uh, dou u by dou x okay all this evaluated of course at ab okay this is at ab okay so this is the modulus is dou u by dou x squared plus dou u by dou y squared at the point ab okay and um, so we will give a geometric interpretation uh, when okay so assume for the time being that f prime of a plus ib i mean df collapses some of the vectors at the point ab in r2 okay so when f prime of a plus ib is non zero it's interesting okay to see what happens uh, then the modulus of course is non zero is non zero okay and then uh, df which is now a linear transformation okay of a vector alpha 1 okay comma alpha 2 or okay or a vector let me write vectors as alpha 1 alpha 2 in r2 okay so the the vector alpha 1 alpha 2 corresponds to a complex number uh, alpha 1 plus i alpha 2 okay we are going to treat this vector okay as a small increment to uh, a point uh, uh, or a small increment to the point a comma b in the complex plane or a plus i b in the complex plane okay so uh, since df is a linear approximation of the function near the uh, near the point okay near the point ab so if we take a small increment to a plus i b uh, namely alpha 1 plus i alpha 2 which is uh, you know small in modulus okay then df transforms this vector to uh, the the range okay and then we can add f of a plus i b uh, to this uh, to the transformation of this vector Uh, alpha 1 plus i alpha 2 to get a linear approximation of the function okay so that's the idea of uh, differentiation anyway okay so now um, so we will consider the transformation of alpha 1 plus i alpha 2 namely the corresponding vector alpha 1 alpha 2 under df okay so what that gives us is df uh, of alpha 1 alpha 2 is uh, of course do you um, so I, i'll multiply the matrix do u by do x do u by do y minus do u by do y do u by do x all this at the point ab of course okay uh, times alpha 1 alpha 2 which gives me uh, do u uh, so alpha 1 do u by do x plus alpha 2 do u by do y plus i times minus alpha 1 do u by do y plus alpha 2 uh, do u by do x okay so uh, the modulus of the transformed vector okay is going to be uh, so i i mean i wrote the result as a complex number but really this should be you know this portion going in the first component and this portion going in the second component i'm using this correspondence okay so um so the modulus of this uh, in this form the modulus of df of alpha 1 alpha 2 okay so i'm use abusing notation a little bit okay but we are trying to see what the uh, geometric interpretation here is okay so this is going to be after some calculation alpha 1 squared uh, so the modulus squared is alpha 1 squared plus alpha 2 squared times 
dou u by dou x that is dou u by dou x whole squared plus dou v by dou x squared okay, at the point a b. So, this is at the point a b. Okay. And so, uh, the modulus is really uh, the modulus of alpha itself okay, alpha here is alpha 1 plus i alpha 2. Okay, the modulus of alpha itself and this we recognize as the modulus of f prime of a plus i b. Okay. So, if you take a vector which is alpha 1 plus i alpha 2 which is an increment to the point a plus i b which you can consider as an increment to complex increment to the point a plus i b. Okay. Then uh, what f prime does is takes this vector alpha 1 plus i alpha 2 uh, to a vector which is whose modulus is modulus of alpha times the modulus of the derivative of f. Okay. So, a picture is in order. Okay. So, here is um, Okay, so, I will draw the picture after I complete the other part namely the argument. Okay. So, likewise uh, what we can say is that um, the argument of d f of alpha 1 alpha 2 what is this? So, we will look at this computation here the argument is uh, what is it going to be? Um, okay. So, before I compute the argument, okay, let me uh, let me let me show that okay, uh, dou u by dou x minus i dou u by dou y, which is your f prime at the point a b. Okay, so this at the point a b. Uh, okay, times alpha one plus i alpha two actually gives you uh, this alpha one dou u by dou x plus alpha 2 dou u by dou y plus i times minus alpha 1 dou u by dou y plus alpha 2 dou u by dou x, okay, which is nothing but this expression is nothing but what we have uh, here. Okay. So, d f of alpha 1 alpha 2 is your um, is your f prime at the point a plus i b times uh, the vector alpha 1 plus. So, the vector alpha the complex multiplication of these two uh, complex numbers. Okay. So, the argument of d f of this is nothing but argument of uh, f prime of a plus i b plus the argument of alpha. Okay, because we know that the argument of product of two complex numbers is the sum of the arguments uh, of those two complex numbers. Okay. So, using that principle I have uh, this here. Okay. So, uh, what I can say is that what I can say from here is that uh, the argument of alpha is augmented by argument of f prime of a plus i b. Okay. So, now I have a picture of uh, the derivative. Okay. So, here is the domain d okay. and then here is the point a plus i b okay. and if I consider a small complex increment to that alpha 1 plus i alpha 2 okay. then this is transformed via f to okay, this point goes to f of a plus i b okay. and this vector alpha 1 plus i alpha 2. So, this is actually the complex point you can say that is the complex point uh, a plus i b plus alpha 1 plus i alpha 2. Okay. So, that is that is why I am calling this an increment vector. Okay. So, uh, this increment goes to okay, uh, a vector. So, this this argument let me imagine that uh, Okay, that is theta, that is theta, which is the argument of alpha 1 plus i alpha 2. Okay. So, this vector goes to a vector like that, okay, uh, whose length is now modulus of alpha okay, times the modulus of f prime at a plus i b. So, it is multiplied by the modulus of uh, f prime of a plus i b okay, and then uh, 
it is turned by an additional angle of. So, this is theta and then this is uh, argument of f prime of a plus i b. It is so, so the effect of derivative is it takes an increment vector okay, and scales it up by the modulus of f prime and then turns uh, it further by the argument of f prime. Okay. So, that is the picture of uh, the that is the geometric interpretation of what uh, f the derivative of f does to increment vectors uh, okay, when f prime is non zero. Okay. So, that is the geometric uh, meaning. Okay. So, what this this, uh, this results in is the following. Okay. So, if gamma 1 and gamma 2 are two curves which intersect at uh, a plus i b at an angle angle uh, theta okay so yeah theta okay then f of gamma 1 is a curve in the in the uh, range plane okay f of gamma 1 and f of gamma 2 okay intersect at f of a plus i b okay uh, at an angle theta that is because it has moved the tangent vector to gamma 1 uh, by an additional angle of argument of f prime and it has moved the tangent vector to gamma 2 by an additional angle of uh, argument of f prime. So, when you compute the difference between uh, these two the arguments of these two tangent vectors it is going to be the same whether you compute the difference in the range or whether you compute the difference in the domain because both of the these two vectors have been both of these vectors have been moved by an additional same additional angle in their range. Okay. So, uh, so what happens is f when it is differentiable at a plus i b uh, preserves angles. Okay. So, uh, such a map is called conformal. Okay. So, f is conformal if uh, at a plus i b if f prime of uh, a plus i b is non zero we want this, uh, this thing. Okay. so so uh, owing to this we will just say that if f prime of z naught is non zero so conformal means angle preserving conformality means angle preserving so f is angle preserving at a plus i b when derivative is non zero so if f prime of z naught is non zero then uh, we say f is conformal because of uh, this property we say f is conformal at uh, z naught okay it is angle preserving and so we say f is angle preserving or conformal at z naught Okay. So, that is a geometric interpretation of f prime when uh, f prime is non zero at a point. Okay. So, uh, we will consider the converse uh, to the statement uh, that f is di complex differentiable implies the real and imaginary parts of f satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations uh, in the next session. Okay. So, in particular we, we are going to see if f satisfies Cauchy Riemann or the real and imaginary parts of f satisfy Cauchy Riemann equations, uh, then is the function complex differentiable. Okay. So, uh, the short answer to that is uh, no okay. uh, and uh, if we impose one little additional condition uh, that uh, if the partial derivatives are continuous in addition to satisfying the Cauchy Riemann equations, then f becomes complex differentiable. Okay. So, we will prove that in the next, next session uh, and I will stop here.